We're from the Meal Planning app, Plan by Cook. I've cooked professionally for more than 20 years and about Ten years ago um, when I started having children I met lots of mums and they were all asking me loads of questions about food storage, how long to keep food, how, whether food, what foods froze. I was quite surprised that lots of people didn't sort of have that know-how and then I met Gabby. She was sort of your classic phone a friend at five o'clock and see what they were cooking and then race to the shops like just operated in a state of chaos. So we decided that we would make an app together to help solve that problem forget about the five o'clock panic, always know what you're cooking and just shopping once a week so that prevent food waste. what the basics of meal planning are because a lot of food wastage happens when people haven't really thought through what they're having for the week. So that is, is really the core. If you plan your meals, you know what you're cooking, you produce a shopping list and you only buy the food on the shopping list, you're so much less likely to waste food. And the average Australian family is wasting around two and a half thousand dollars worth of food, let alone how much actual food is going into into the um, system so and producing uh, you know, obviously um, emissions and food is a very big emission producer so there are lots of great reasons why you should meal plan but it, at its core financially is one of the um, one of those key things so if you think about saving two and a half thousand dollars for a family of four it's it's a big change in your life so uh, so we're, we're going to t uh, go through <laughs> Um, how to meal plan, Jen's going to demonstrate three fantastic meals for us yep, um, so. on the basis of, uh, of that. But we thought we'd start with saying, well, which is start meal planning, you need to think about what, you know, when you've got busy days in the week and when you might have a bit more time. So if you work part time, for example, on the days that you're not working, you have a bit more time and that might be a day that you would think about cooking a longer meal that might involve, you know, an hour of cooking. And if you're really busy on the short term, you can do um, sort of Asian based meals and things. If you want to have to produce a meal in a very short period of time, that is a great solution or getting a meal from the freezer. So the meal planning approach that we suggest is you really have to cook four meals from scratch every week. So it's not seven, you know, it's a big change from thinking oh, I've got seven meals in front of me, how am I going to make that? But if you can make four meals from scratch, if of those, two of them double the amounts and freeze them. So make them freezable meals. So that could be things like braises, even marinated meat. There's a range of things where you can cut a significant amount of time out of your cooking and you can have those meals, put them in the freezer, um, half in the freezer and then two weeks down the track there's a meal that you may only have to cook a side or maybe cook some pasta or rice with and the dinner is done. So if that's four meals of the week Two of the other meals are meals that you're going to pull from the freezer, as we just said. And the seventh meal, you, have, you think about it as something super simple, whether that is toasted sandwiches, sausages and mash, or you might, leftovers is a great option. So, um, you know, lots of people don't use the leftovers and they get very nervous about it and throw them out before they're, um, well before the time that they, uh, while they're still usable. So, uh, so make that a really super simple meal. In, in Jen's house, your approach is... Yeah, so that. often from those four meals I've cooked, there'll be a bit left over. Everyone will just have one night something different, a different meal, just so that we get through all the food that we've got in the fridge. Yeah, it's like a potluck night from that. So, but, or make it a takeaway meal if you, if you as well, you just can't be bothered um, cooking. But also make sure that you, if you always have a takeaway meal or you always go out one night or go to, go to a family member's house, plan for that. Don't think you're always cooking seven meals. Plan for real life. That is one of our key things that you really need to make sure if you're the kind of person that only has five meals at home a week, don't be going to the shops thinking about seven meals. So that's, that's really it. So it's the four plus two plus one. Um, four meals, two of them freezable and doubling every week. And the other thing we like to say is also to um, cook a snack. If you're, um, you might have kids and you have lunch boxes, 
or you like, might like taking a snack to work, a sweet thing. Uh, if what you do is you um, make it once a week on a Sunday perhaps, cut it into portions and freeze that. So really, uh, yet again, using your freezer really effectively is a key to meal planning. Also, just um, on that seven meals a week, I try and factor in a pantry meal one night during the week. So it might be chickpea curry, it might be a puddinesca pasta sauce, it could be um, a dried noodle dish. That way, if your plans change during the week, um, you're not left with fresh produce in the fridge. So, and I mean, you always sort of have onions and garlic, so there's lots of simple meals you can make um, without wasting food during the week if your plans change. Yeah, you can just delay that meal, no problem at all, and then you've got stuff in the, in the, in the pantry for later, so that's all, all really good. We also like to suggest, even if you're a meat-eating household, try and incorporate at least one vegetarian meal in a week because uh, you know, meat is becoming increasingly a very expensive item in your, in your shopping list. But also uh, making sure that you're getting enough vegetables into, into your um, diet and, and we're going to do a really lovely um, and very simple vegetarian dish as well here and uh, to show for you today. But I think we'll go straight over to Jen then. Okay, so the three things I'm going to cook for you is an apple cake and then I'm going to make a chicken and chorizo braise with olives and udon noodle dish. So the apple cake I'll start with now, so I can get that in the oven, but that's it there. Um, that will be the one that you try later on. So super simple, it's just a cup of sugar. And all these recipes are on our website and, and in our app as well. So if, you, if you're looking for them, don't, you don't need to take notes on those. I'll just have a cup of sugar in there. I have three eggs. No mix master required for this one. Just a fork. A little bit of vanilla. And some melted butter. It's about 100 grams of melted butter in there. So I just make a really simple batter. And it just goes to show you how simple a lot of things are. That I mean, and as Jen said, no mix master required. You know, tasty food doesn't need to be complicated, and uh, but using fresh ingredients and, and fresh herbs and things can really make great, great food. But I think sometimes we overcomplicate our cooking and get a bit stressed about how we're going to make meals. Whereas this is just a fantastic example of a very simple dish. So also, I guess the beauty of making your own food from scratch um, is you get to control the ingredients. Uh, this is also a good recipe to use up apples which have been in the fruit bowl for a bit too long and looking a bit bruised or they've come home and they're all bruised. Just mix that flour through to make the batter. Gabby's grated some apples there for me. I've just done those. You can just use a normal box grater, but I've just used the um, mandolin. This is a great tool to have in the kitchen, and you know, a lot of people have got food processors, but if, you know, if you're in an apartment, you may not have room for that kind of equipment. And this is a fantastic handheld um, julienne slicer that would be available here at the market, so I'm sure, at, at a kitchen shop. And, um, and look, we use it for everything, for, for carrots in, in Asian dishes. It's absolutely fabulous. And it works really well even for, uh, for things like grating, grating apples. So it's, you know, it's a great example of one of the things we would suggest to, to have in your kitchen as well. So I'll just put about two thirds of the batter into the tin and then just sprinkle on the apples. And then I'll put the rest of the batter on top and then it just cooks for about 40 minutes. And as Jen says, any, any apples that you've got, it doesn't matter. I mean, we've used Granny Smith apples here, but. but Absolutely, you can uh, use red apples, anything that's, that's there. Use up things in your kitchen rather than going and, and buying more things, you know. I think I was very guilty of always needing exactly every ingredient uh, in a recipe, for example, and, and really learning how to be creative with, uh, with your, um, the food that you have at hand is really important. So this looks like it's not quite enough, but in the oven it'll spread out over the top. And here again, Jen's using a, um, 
uh, silicon spatula. That's another great tool to have in your in your, in your kitchen for around um, both for <coughs> desserts and for around um, and for uh, main meals. It's a, a great tool. So into the oven about forty minutes. I'll just put a timer on for that so I don't forget it. The next thing Jen's going to do is um, is the chicken chorizo braise. As we talked about, the doubling of your meals is quite a critical to and uh, uh, to making the best of your meal planning. So, uh, we on our app you can see we we have a snowflake on any of the um, on any of the recipes that are freezeable. So we really can't stress enough the idea that if you want to save time in the kitchen and save money and and minimise your food waste, absolutely double any meal that is freezeable. So you've always got food in your freezer for an emergency situation or in two weeks down the track when you'd like to use it. Try not to, to use them all in the same week because you know, your family might get a bit bored by, uh, by the same meal or twice in one week. But you know, if, you can, if you've got room and you can store it in your freezer, absolutely um, think about that, plan that for two weeks down the track because it makes a big difference to, to your time and, uh, and indeed to how much food you're going, you're going through. All right, so for this chicken and chorizo, just going to heat some oil and then cook off the onions and garlic. If you don't have a huge amount of um, room in your freezer, you can always use, um, for example, those Ziploc bags. And if you've doubled the recipe, for example, you can use the Ziploc bags and they're reusable. And but if you sort of store it quite flat and you sort of squash it down and then you can more or less file the meals into your freezer and it really saves a lot of space. Obviously having containers that are a bit larger can be a bit, if you've only got a small space. So really if you can, if you can kind of almost file your meals in, into your freezer then you, you should be able to store, store more, more food than uh, if you were otherwise trying to just have your ice blocks and your uh, bread. <laughs> small amounts of bread. So I'm just going off the onions and garlic. So if I know I'm cooking a couple of meals during the week, um, you know, it might be bolognese and it might be a curry, I often cut, if I'm going to cut one onion, I might as well cut two or three. So I often cut all the onions whenever I'm cooking the first of those meals. So they tend to go a little bit smelly in the fridge, so I just cook them all off and then store them in the fridge. And then it's the start of that meal for when you come home that week. It's like you might as well just cry once a week <laughs> instead of every day. And also, um, eschalots are a great alternative to an onion. If you're if you're cooking for one or two, um, and rather than always having a half onion sitting around in your fridge, think about buying eschalots with the, those little mini French lots. They are fabulous for um, uh, as a, as a, for just using a smaller amount as well. So think about how much, how much you're cooking for. So often in our app, you will see that we suggest an eschalot when it's when it's a smaller amount of onion required. So. So I just sweat that off. So normally I would cook the onions quite slowly for about uh, 20 minutes, but I won't bore you with that. Um, so then I'm just going to brown off the chicken. So I'm just using thighs, chicken thighs. And then some sweet paprika. teaspoon of paprika in there and it's good to cook off the spices to get a bit of the um, sort of raw taste out of them I would say Here, gotcha. Sorry. Uh, we use chicken thighs a lot in our cooking because they're often more moist than, um, than chicken breasts there are obviously dishes that you would use chicken breasts for uh, traditionally they used to be also less expensive than chicken breasts but now they're about the same price so I think everyone's cottoned on to the fact that they're being used more but uh, it's, it's actually a taste and, and uh, moisture issue with uh, chicken thighs rather than chicken breast. So. But in sort of the active cooking phase with a dish like this, there's, there's really only about sort of 10 minutes of active, active cooking where you need to be at the stove. And so, you know, looking for those dishes is, is really good if you are very time poor. So I'm just adding some tomato passata and a little bit of water and some roast uh, capsicums. So you can just buy those at the deli or you can buy them in a jar at the supermarket. And then chorizo. So I've just peeled and sliced that chorizo. This chorizo adds a great flavour to any food with very little cooking. You, this dish doesn't take long to cook, but it's full of flavour. 
So I'll just let that cook now for probably um, half an hour to simmer away. And then at the end, I'll add some parsley and some olives. So. Great. Now, we might talk a bit about food storage. I think it's probably a great time to, to um, talk about that. We uh, Often our food wastage happens when we haven't stored um, our food correctly and uh, you go and suddenly you go to the fridge to retrieve whatever you've bought and, and it's not looking so great. So, uh, And then you at a loss of what to cook <laughs> if, if, if the core part of the meal is actually already um, no longer usable. So... So we like to um, suggest for a few things that, you know, herbs, for example, are a great example of things where you buy them at the supermarket or um, even at the market here today and they serve them to you in a, plastic, in a plastic sleeve like that. And, you know, the moment you open them, they're fine from when you open them, but then, then if you put them back into that plastic, they are going to be terrible in a day, really. I mean, you might get another day, but it's very... Um, that's very difficult to, to keep herbs fresh. So Jen's got a great solution for that. So the best way to keep herbs, so especially coriander, mint, all the soft herbs, um, you know, you, you want to buy fresh herbs, but it's like you don't want to buy them and then three days later you don't get any more use out of it, you throw it out. So if you pick the leaves off the parsley or the coriander and then wash them and then spin them either in a salad spinner, dry them in that, or between um, tea towels, and then store them in a sealed container between paper towel and you'll easily get 10 days to two weeks. So this, I mean, you see all these people say, oh, stand the herbs up in water, wrap them in paper towel, put them in the fridge, put them in newspaper. I've tried everything. This is the only method that works. So, I mean, and also if you buy three bunches of herbs, you could easily sort of scrunch them up and store them all in the one um, so that you've got a nice selection of herbs to make quick salads. Um, with fresh herbs without, you know, the expense of buying new herbs every week. Uh, and think over a two-week period of sort of like-minded dishes. If you're buying Thai basil, you might use it one week in something and then it'll still be okay 10 days later to use again if you store it correctly. And the same with salad leaves. Um, if you, um, what you, often if they're in the packet, they're okay, but once you bring them home and open it, they're really limp. So if you wash them and dry them and then store them in sealed containers, you get a lot, a lot longer life out of them. Yeah, and the paper towel on the top and bottom is the key there because I think that absorbs the moisture, yes. Is that work with like a normal tea towel? Yes, yeah, you can use yep. tea towels, yep. yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a glass container or a plastic container, it's the sealed nature of it is the important part of it. So don't stress and really don't go out and buy more things. That's, you know, we don't, we don't need anything more in our generally overflowing kitchens. So it's just, it's just great to, uh, uh, to ha have anything that seals well and it's up to your own personal preference whether it's glass or plastic that you use. But uh, um, that's, that makes a big change in terms of, because it's $3 or more for um, some herbs and you know, it's, a, it's a very expensive item, to, but herbs really make, it, make dishes taste great. So, so they're a great way to, to um, keep, keep things fresh. Basil, you don't need to wash as much. Yeah, I tend not to wash the basil. It's usually hypochronically grown and it tends to go black if you do wash the basil. So you can just pop it straight into the thing. And if you've got basil and uh, you've, you've got a lot of it, make some pesto. You know, pesto is a five minute dish and it is so simple to make. And, and, and it freezes. It freezes. So if you like get a drink. batch of it, uh, freeze it and then you've got, you know, really quick dinner. My kids often like to have some, have some uh, pesto pasta after, after school as a, as a snack. So I actually just freeze it in small, smaller amounts if I've... Um, if I've made, made some, it's not enough for my family of five, and uh, and that's perfect. They just retrieve that out of the freezer and, and defrost it and throw it through some, cook some pasta for themselves. So it's a really great solution as a, as a quick meal. Um, a perfect vegetarian and freezeable meal. So another example of something that we would say to, to double as well. Just on freezing, um, a great thing to do when you buy meat from the markets or the shops, bring it all home, you stick it in the freezer, you have no plan for it, you don't know what you're going to cook with it, you often don't label it, you're not sure what it is until you defrost it. So a good habit to get into is when you bring meat home from the shop, marinate it and then freeze it. Because if you just master a few really basic marinades, it might be yogurt with a few Indian spices to marinate some chicken or lamb, it could be five spice powder and honey and soy, just really simple marinades. Marinate the meat into the freezer and then 
all you need to do, I mean ideally defrost it the night before in the fridge and then you just need to put it on the barbecue and make a salad. Um, it's just a really quick way of getting a, a dinner on the table without, you know, not knowing what that's been put in the freezer for. And it's a surprising, it's surprising how many people go, that's one of the best food meal planning tips they've had because, you know, I'd never thought about doing that before. Um, Jen suggested that and it really is great. If, you, if you're doing that again, double those uh, quantities and serve, serve one up. And for the meat that you're putting in, into your fridge, the half that you're going to eat this week, uh, it, it can just stay in the fridge. It doesn't need to be immediately frozen unless it's for a, a number of days down the, down the track. If, it's, if you're cooking it the next night or a couple of nights down, the, down, that's absolutely fine to just store that, that half in the fridge and the two weeks down the track uh, goes into the freezer as well. So, so that again, so that you're maximising um, uh, how much food, you know, the, or minimising the amount of food that you're cooking, but also um, not, not having too much stuff in your freezer again. And also cooking food from scratch, um, if after three days there's half of it in the fridge still and you realise you're going to go out for the rest of the week and it's not going to get eaten, you can freeze it. Often people are really worried about how long you can keep food, but if you've prepared it yourself from scratch, it is fine after three days to put in the freezer. Often with takeaway food, you'd probably think about um, eating that the next day, and if you haven't haven't eaten it, it's it's a bit more problematic because you don't know how long they've been cooking that food in the um, or how long it's been in the kitchen or wherever you've purchased it from. So so really, for if you've got leftovers from takeaway, take them to, um, to work the next day or eat them, uh, plan to eat them the next day rather than leaving them for a number of days in your in your fridge. Um, I think there might, we might talk quickly while Jen starts getting organised for the next meal. You may not think about freezing. For example, um, I like to buy bacon in bulk. It's a lot, more, it's a lot cheaper to buy it by the, by the kilo. And then I, I put it in four or five rasher um, and separate it a bit in, and leave, put that in the freezer. So I always have some bacon at home if I'm making bolognese and, and it's, you know, it's, it's a lovely flavour and enhancer really to, to a bolognese. So, or you just need, need, some, need some bacon. That's a great example of something you may not have thought about freezing. Bread is one of the most thrown out items that uh, uh, councils deal with. And, uh, you know, if, if people, for example, there's crusts left over that no one has eaten, put them into the freezer, blitz them up when you need them and, and have them as fresh breadcrumbs. I actually blitz things immediately. If I haven't, if I haven't used it, I will just blitz it up and, um, and keep it in a big container in the in the freezer and just use it whatever I need for um, for various dishes, whether it's crumbed eggplant or um, or some crumbed chicken thighs. It's so simple and they're fresh. I haven't bought, I haven't had the need to buy uh, breadcrumbs in years on that basis. So you know, use the breadcrumbs are a fantastic um, a fantastic use of leftover over bread before you, so rather than throw it out. I think there's a statistic that says. Melburnians throw out an Eiffel Tower of bread every two months. If you don't use a lot of bread yourself, um, buy it already sliced or have them slice it at the, at the bakery and, and then just use it defrosted in portions so that you're not, you're not sort of leaving it in your bread bin and, and it's um, gone mouldy before it's used. So they're really, really great tips. Um, hot chilies are also a great op option for, um, for freezing. So if you, they often sell those in a mini bag. You don't often buy, sometimes you can't buy them individually. So uh, pop them into the freezer and they're really super simple to um, to slice as well. It's easier to slice them frozen. And kaffir lime leaves, that's another good yeah. one. Yeah, curry freeze. leaves. Curry leaves, yeah, there's loads of things. Um, you know, if you buy limes at the moment, they're really cheap. If you juice them all and put them in the freezer in ice cube trays, um, then you have lime juice for salads and dressings. In summer, when you want to use it, and when they're you know very expensive, three dollars a lime at times over summer. So, and, but in winter, they're just you know really perfectly priced. So, just think more laterally about how you can use your freezer, and uh, because the freezer is your friend when you when in terms of meal planning and saving money and, and saving your food waste big time. So, I might start with these udon noodles. So, this is just a great dish to use up if you've got half a capsicum in your fridge. Maybe you've got a carrot, one or two mushrooms. You often have some eggs. Um, I've just used uh, a pantry noodle, so it's just an udon noodle, and that's in the Asian section of the supermarket. It doesn't have to be stored in the fridge, so that's just a great, um, great thing to have and use up whatever sort of leftovers you have. Um, so I'm just going to um, put the eggs into the bowl first. Got 
three eggs and then just put in the carrots. Capsicum and mushrooms. And I'll just mix that through. And then I'm just going to add some um, soy. Uh, I've already mixed it here, but I've got sesame oil, some mirin, and some rice vinegar, and some soy sauce. So I've just mixed those in here, and I'm going to place that in here. And look again, this is super simple. And rather than buying a pre-made um, uh, sauce in the, sometimes you can often buy those in the, in the supermarket pre-made um, Asian dressings and things like that. Actually, it's very easy to make your own and. And you know what's gone in there. I have an MSG allergy, so I have to be really careful about what um, ingredients go in. Again, just very easy and really inexpensive to own your own and, and quickly make up a dressing yourself. I'll just wait till that gets a little bit hotter. So you could do this in a wok as well. We're not cooking in a wok today due to <laughs> the sheer, sheer volume of smoke uh, that gets produced. We often do these workshops in libraries, so they've always got um, a sprinkler above you. <laughs> They're a bit nervous they're gonna set it all off in the middle of a demonstration. And in here I use, uh, Jen's got used just an olive oil. I know we often have, which oil should we be using for cooking? And uh, I've just set, gone to a light olive oil for all my cooking now, rather than, rather than having vegetable oils and you know just a range of oils. Uh, we often get asked about extra virgin olive oil. Now, extra virgin olive oil is the first press and a, and a really lovely oil, but it is suitable for salad dressings as opposed to cooking, as it, because it, it just uh, it can often be too flavoursome for your cooking. And so, um, so really, a normal a normal olive oil, which isn't as expensive as an extra virgin olive oil, is, is absolutely fine for um, for your everyday cooking too. And whether you're cooking in Asian dish or whatever, but the light tasting one is a is a great one to go. So you're not it's not tasting whatever. Um, the food that you're cooking. This is a great Sunday night meal, you know, reintroducing the idea of a Sunday night meal that was super simple, whether, you know, as we said, like the toasted sandwiches or whatever. This is a super quick meal. And trying to use up the things that are left over in your fridge at the end of the week before you go shopping is a really good idea. So, you know, getting closer to the end of the week, depending what day you go shopping, maybe here at the markets, uh, if, it's, if that's your shop on a, on a Sunday, on a Saturday, try and just use up, see what's in you in your fridge there and try and use them up and it might be that you want to do a roast dinner there are so many options for using up the food that's in your fridge and um, rather than letting that go to waste or going and buying more and then forgetting which one that you was fresher than the other one so um, this, this kind of a dish is absolutely perfect for that so just cook this through so the egg cooks through and um, scrambles so also when you're doing Asian cooking, it's um, good to mix all your sauces beforehand. Um, so then when you're like, if you're stir frying the meat really quickly and then you're trying to pour all the sauces, it's just um, easier to put them all in a bowl together and then you can just add them in one go. And we were asked the other night about what the secret to a great stir fry is and you know that A, getting the right sauce is, is possibly, that is absolutely the most important one, but also so that you're not messing around at the time you're cooking, doing Jen's uh, pre-done sauce here is, is absolutely um, a great time saver and when you're a bit stressed because everything's cooking very fast in a stir fry. I'll just add a bit of parsley to that one. So you might be able to see here the eggs sort of scrambling on there, which is nice. Cooking through. And Jen simply um, soaked these um, noodles in warmer water to separate them. Just add those in. And then I just at the end, I'll add a bit more of the sauce, the sesame oil, soy, mirin and the vinegar. And then we add some sesame seeds and some pickled ginger. And again, all of these things are really readily available at the supermarket or here at the markets. So there's nothing too uh, too fancy here that will take you having having to go to a lot of specialty shops. So the important thing is to is to is to make your everyday cooking exactly that every day and really achievable. So um, 
try and keep your um, you know, your master chef aspirations for dinner parties cause, and make your evening you know, just so much easier. Do anyone, does anyone here have any particular challenges that they have about, about trying to use up food or, or put an evening meal on the table at a reasonable hour? I certainly struggled with, with ideas. I think that was one of the hardest things that, um, that I found when, um, uh, when I had three kids is trying to think about new things to cook all the time. And, and, and so I, it really made a big difference to me sort of having, having the meal plan and not having to do that thinking on a daily basis. So, and on our website and on our Facebook page, uh, we do weekly meal suggestions as well, weekly meal plans. So to give you an idea about what you can, um, can cook, if you're really short on ideas, so they're based seasonally as well. So um, uh, at the moment we're moving into sort of soups and, and other cooler meals. And obviously in summer you do more things like, as Jen said, you know, marinades on the barbecue and whatever. But Again, just always incorporating that idea of um, freezing two, doubling and freezing two meals each week. So, um, but if that if that's a real challenge for you, that that certainly is um, uh, having the ideas generated for you is is, is marvelous too. So that's the the udon noodles. So I've just put the um, sesame seeds and pickled ginger, and it's just a really quick dinner to use up the leftovers. And that is the chicken and chorizo. Rays, which I'll serve up now and I'll hand them around. Anyway, there's lots of cook, uh, uh, tips and hints to save time in the kitchen as well. If you follow us on Instagram and, and, and Facebook, we'll, we'll, we, often, we usually give a tip every, every week on things. We give a new recipe, meal plans, and um, just lots of ideas of, of easy things to cook. So uh, if that certainly is the, um, takes the pain out of the evening, evening meal. On our app, uh, there's 130 recipes, and there are, um, and probably 50 of those are freezable meals. So there's plenty of ideas of things that you can freeze. And the benefit of our app is you you can double every um, the amount. So if you're a household of two, you can scale that meals uh, those meals up to four, and uh, it'll generate all the ingredients at, 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 at four. If you're a household of five, like in in my instance, we've got uh, I scale up all freezable meals to ten. 10 serves, so it's, they, all the meals are offered at 1 to 10 serves, um, and there's quite a lot of um, snacks and sides and, and other things as well, so it really is handy, it generates a shopping list like magic, and uh, I think that's half the thing, half the tr trouble is getting to the shops, you can, you can take your phone and, and cross off the items as you go, so it's a really useful tool to, it certainly revolutionised my life and, um, uh, and lots of other people since, so I think that's a... Uh, uh, you can have a look at that after the after the demonstration as well if you'd like to like to see that. Now I think we might start handing around some tastings. Is that enough? If we, is Has everyone got both the meals there? Yeah. Excellent. And there's plenty more if anyone would like any more. So when talking about leftovers. Yes. And obviously, um, then Michael can I make a recipe? Then there are how many, you know, the ingredients that 50 uh, grams of this one, 100 grams of that one. So obviously the leftovers, maybe it doesn't have, uh, in my kitchen doesn't have 100 grams of something. So how do I still make that meal without not having leftovers to make up that meal according to the recipe? Now I was that kind of cook as well. Like if I didn't have exactly the right amounts, I'd really panic about how to, how to make that recipe up. But uh, you know, watching Jen cook, I've really realised that you just have to have a bit of confidence with, and you think, well, I may not have as many carrots as I need for that recipe, but I've, do, I've got extra mushrooms, so I'm just going to, you know, if it's bulk that I need. The other thing we suggest is if you, if you see a recipe that has, say, 500 grams of tin tomatoes, obviously tin tomatoes come in 400 gram uh, lots, and either use, just use the two tins or one tin and it's going to be fine. With your everyday it won't meals, alter the recipe that much. It's yeah. not like when you make cakes when the measurements have to yeah. be precise. Yeah, exactly. When you're cooking just um, everyday meals, it's fine to alter. Mm -hmm. And, and then things like, like one bok cabbage, um, you always buy a whole one and it's like you only need half. You've got to think of two things you're going to make over a fortnight so that you don't be get left with half of one bok in your fridge at the end of the week or the end of the fortnight.
Or if a recipe says cabbage and uh, and you've got you've got a wombok cabbage, use use that wombok cabbage for something for it doesn't have to be say wombok cabbage. I think it's again it's a confidence confidence thing in in many ways. But um, but if you've got a savoy cabbage and it calls for wombok cabbage, you know you can probably use that up as well. So rather than thinking oh, I'm going off to the shops to buy something else again, it's easier to um, use up what what you have and and be a bit more confident with that. I think. But as Jen says, you know, the wombok cabbage is a big thing. We've got a great uh, Asian beef mince recipe on our on our app. And if you've got leftovers, there's a fantastic Vietnamese chicken salad and um, to use it. So it is that planning, start of the week, end of the week, to use those fresh ingredients if you um, if they're slightly out of the uh, usual, off the usual shopping list, say. So. If I open a can of beans, can beans, can yes. beans uh, I can't think of the Yep. So are there any good methods to keep it for a long time or can I put it in a freezer again? Okay. Is that um, the cannellini beans or the... Uh, any, any kind any of canned beans? Or, uh, chickpeas? chickpeas. Yeah, yeah um, you, you can freeze them, um, the cooked beans. Yeah, they do freeze. So if you open a tin of chickpeas or kidney beans, you can put them in a snap lock bag and freeze the remaining and they're fine. Should I keep it like a drain? Add some more water. Uh, just add water to store it in the fridge. Not and to take, uh, get rid of the, the water. Get rid of the tinned water and put fresh water and store it in the fridge. Because the beans don't last very long in the fridge once you've opened the can. They tend to go, go a bit slimy. But yeah. either store them in water in the fridge, not the can, the water in the can, or put them in the freezer in a snap lock bag. Should I change the water every day? Um, Sometimes, sometimes they go a bit bubbly. Yeah, I mean, just have a look at it. If it starts getting bubbles on it, it means it's starting to ferment. So yeah, you might need to change the water. I've not had success with that. <laughs> have tried that. Um, the best way to store tofu is in water. Yeah, and change the water. Again, and that's a meal planning. Start thinking through so how you, you could use it. Say use all the tofu. Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. Yeah, it's quite you hard know. to store it. Yeah, it um, doesn't freeze particularly well, so it is definitely one of those kind of ingredients that we would say that. Again, with the beans, you know, scale your recipe up to use up a full tin, and if it's a freezeable meal, um, have the meal fully cooked and then put it in the freezer. Rather, if you're worried about so, um, storing the beans in your fridge as well, so so that's just a simple solution to to that. We want to try the apple yeah, cake now as well. Around. Would you like to take in this, uh, yeah, and try the apple cake? <laughs> and again with the chickpeas, um, the chickpea water, uh, a lot of vegans are using the chickpea water now as an, as an uh, egg white substitute. And so you can make meringues with, we've, and we've got a recipe on our website for um, for meringues and also vegan mayonnaise. So they're two things you can make if you don't want to waste the chickpea water because there's something about in the in the process of the heating of the of the chickpeas that the water that it uh, uh, is generated in those. So if you if you when you're draining the chickpeas, capture that water, and if you've got um, a vegan in your household, you know. Or someone yeah, with an right. egg allergy. Yeah. We have, I have um, a dear friend whose children are anaphylactic to um, with eggs, and they tasted meringue for the first time in their lives and cried when we made it. Like they were so excited because they're children, and you know they see kids eating meringue, and uh, and for years have never never knew what it sort of tasted like, and it's fantastic. It does have a bit of a tang of of the of the chickpeas, but so if you. Th those kids didn't mind because they didn't really know, I guess, what um, what uh, normal egg whites would taste like. But but actually, we used a bit of um, with cocoa powder and and rolled them in there, and absolutely fabulous. So uh, and again, another use for something that you'd be otherwise throwing out. But vegan mayonnaise, fantastic, as well. Again, there's a recipe on our website, but the um, it doesn't store for long, so only make it in smaller portions as well. Fresh vegetables, yeah. I think we're all guilty often of, of making optimistic fruit and vegetable purchasing. <laughs> and uh, so, and I certainly was, and I used to throw out. And I sort of wasn't really thinking it through because I was putting lots into the compost. But again, that's food waste. And, and I think it's changing our mindset that even food going to compost is still food waste. So 
uh, really be th planning and thinking through and only buying things in the quantities that you need them. So while it's often tempting to, to buy the whole celery, you often don't need the whole celery in the time that you would need to, um, need to uh, use it. So, you know, try and look for it in the halves or sometimes you can buy it loose in, um, at the fruit and veg shop just in the stalks as well. So if you're only cooking for one or two people, that's a really you know, a great thing to do as well. Not, not over buy just because it looks like it's on sale. And again, eggplants, for example, look magnificent. But if you haven't got a plan of how you're going to yeah, use them, out yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very... They always look so good. They look fabulous, you know. <laughs> But yeah, again, if you haven't if you haven't haven't got a plan on how to use it, it will go to waste. So if we we really say it's not it's not a special if it, if you're going to throw it out. So um, only buy food on special that you can store or is freezeable um, or non-perishable. So that's the only only basis upon which I'd ever buy food. If I go to the supermarket and meat is on special, fabulous. So. It's a, that's a great way of, um, and if I can marinate it or cook it and put it into the freezer. But fresh uh, vegetables are things that will notoriously go to waste if you haven't got a plan on how to use them. So. I always, I always tomato paste. I always end up wasting half a tin or half a can of tomato paste. Yep. Yeah, so the best thing to do is once, you, when, once you've opened it um, and you've taken out what you need, wipe the side and then cover it with oil. And then it seals it and it doesn't get mould on it. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, does the tomato paste doesn't come in a metal can anymore, does it? No, it, it comes mainly in glass. It oh, do, oh, the little do they? ones. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. Now in which case, decant that into into a smaller container, even if yeah. it's a plastic container, anything that a bit smaller. Or glass. And, yeah. Or glass, you know, if you have if you have old jars from 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 something else, use those to. But it, um, but a good store. centimetre or two centimetres of oil on top will seal it and and definitely won't get any mould. Because mm. while it's very handy in the little sachets, it's both expensive and kind of wasteful all that packaging. So so I, I like to buy it in the in the jar and and just use it. So. Again, use if you if you're really getting into your habits of freezing, you'll start using up slightly larger quantities than you'd usually use if you were just cooking one meal as well. So you, you churn through those ingredients a bit more. I mean, we try not to suggest to have too many things in your freezer, uh, in your fridge. You know, we often have so many jars of things that you know you've used small amounts of all the time, and and then you'd look at the use by dates and I'm slightly horrified by how long that food might have been in your fridge. So. So if you if you're making your things from scratch, you're less likely to uh, to have lots and lots of items in your in your fridge, for example. So um, so that you use less of them. So really, going back to basics and learning learning some great great uh, cooking from scratch uh, meals really stops a huge amount of that food wastage. Might hand around the iPad and show a few people sure. how the app works. Feel free to come up and have seconds. Um, more right. cake. Our app is called Plan by Cook and it is available for iPhone and iPad and it's $5.99 and uh, you can go to the App Store and search for it That's, uh, and, or, and follow us again on Facebook, Instagram, we've got quite a few videos on YouTube and um, Twitter as well so if you want to get social with us please feel free, we'd love to have you and send us any, any questions you have. You know, we're always we're always engaging on on, on our social media channels as well, and uh, and any suggestions as well. You might have had a really great meal or uh, something that you really is your favourite meal. Love to hear about that, um, and great uses for for your leftovers and your, and eliminating food waste. We you know love all those suggestions. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. This workshop has been provided by the City of Port Phillip to support you to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, water use and waste. For further information, please visit sustainableportphillip.com.